A Short Sharp Shock is a 1990 fantasy novel, <laughs> kind of a question in there, by Kim Stanley Robinson. Uh, it opens with a man uh, getting washed up on a beach uh, with also with a woman. They get they they make it they make it to the shore, pass out. When the man wakes up, the woman is gone. He finds out from people who take him in that the woman's been taken by the Spine Kings. Why are they called Spine Kings? He's awoken on a planet which is encircled by just a single spine of land uh, that goes all the way around, is populated by all these various various races of people. Uh, you've got shell people, you've got, there's bird people, there's um, odd women with, with, they've got faces for eyes, and then those faces have eyes, have, have faces, and then those eyes have faces, and, and going down, um, you've got like um, uh, species that can kind of just change, can change their, seem to be able to change their gender at will, there's potentially cat women in a way, it's all these different kind of very representational, they seem to all sort of symbolize something, whether it's uh, philosophy or sex or um, kind of just kind of messy democracy or the, <laughs> Romeo's and Capulets and all sorts of stuff. I, I probably, I haven't pulled pulled everything apart. It's one of these books that I, I listened to it. I listened to it. Uh, it was narrated by Paul Michael Garcia. And it was one of these books like, oh, I got to the end and I went, oh, that was weird and I went back to the beginning and I kind of listened to big large hunks of it again just to kind of sink back into the world and sort of let it sink into me because it feels very much like um you get the sense of a kind of a there's like a lot of talk of like deja vu and you get the sense of kind of like you know rebirths and like this is an ancient ancient world and perhaps these perhaps our our heroes uh fell he's he doesn't remember his name he, he crash he, he comes out of the ocean and he doesn't remember his name so it's almost like it's a birth um, at first you think, oh, this is Kim Stanley Robinson and it's science fiction and that, oh, it's going to be, it's, he's a space traveler and he's been traveling through like, you know, in a, on a, in, a, in a spaceship. And there's indeed, there's some of the early stories that seem to kind of suggest that, oh, maybe this is space travel and there's a race that's created this planet, AKA kind of Larry Niven's ring world series or something like that. Um, but as it goes along, you get the sense that like, more and more, this is just sort of, it's weird kind of just sort of dream logic on, and, the, you know, the things that the transformational things that happen to them, there's uh, there's this thing called the, the mirror artifact called the mirror, which, the, the, you know, people get shoved through and it's almost like a birth canal and birthing. Um, and it seems to do odd kind of it messes up them psychologically. Um, he visits various places, as I said, like kind of philosophers. Uh, there's, you know, stuff on sex, which was actually some of the more bizarre stuff, which I, makes me do, do think think of dream stuff because it's one of these things where sometimes a pussy is actually it's a pussy cat and you kind of get it was weird kind of squickish kind of bestiality stuff in there and but at the end of it he picks up the mirror and he looks into it and he kind of holds up the his partner in that and it's a picture it, he sees a he, he sees um he sees his partner that the, the woman that he's had sex with but it's got his features uh, which is like unmistakably like oh he's having sex with himself it's which is maybe some kind of a comment on a f male fantasy how we male fantasies and projecting it on and how we're not really having sex with the women we think we're super attracted to in a sexual way but we're actually kind of just dealing with our own messed up neuroses I who knows maybe I've just done some TI TMI there but um it was so it, it was a very Odd book. It also had, you can tell that um, Robinson is one of these guys who loves nature, loves ecology. Um, he is an ecological uh, science fiction writer. It's not, his, his, his science fiction isn't about kind of cold, sterile metal and space rockets, even though there are space rockets and there's nothing wrong with them, but he's, he's interested in kind of the science fiction of biology, of uh, ecology, of, of having such a, um, beautiful and intricate and delicate uh ecosphere that we that we live in and treasuring that and and uh this this basically this whole planet is one big beach which i have to think for someone who's a water rat like myself <laughs> water rats do come up in this book uh is is sort of a, is it would be a dreamscape so uh it's not a book that's gonna people who are into hard science fiction people who are into uh kind of 
straightforward narrative plots. This is very much a dream story uh, where you kind of come back to the beginning at the end. And if that's not going to be something that satisfies you, if you don't fall into the into the dream, find the dream engaging, uh, it's not going to be for you. Uh, it's definitely unlike, I think, anything that I've encountered or heard about with Kim Stanley Robinson before. So, I mean, if you're someone who's into his writing, it's definitely something to check out, but it wouldn't be a representational first thing to try just because it's short, because it's, you get the sense that this is like, oh, I get to do something cool and different. Um, it's also actually, you know, just to say, as it, as dream stories like this are perfect for novellas uh, because you have long enough to kind of develop the dream and let people sink into it, but you don't have so long that people get like, okay, I'm bored because I'm still in the dream. So the perfect length, perfect length for this work. Um, yeah, yeah, he's, he's, uh, Kim Stanley Robinson is one of these fellows that the more I read his books, the more I'm, it's like, oh, I, I, I sort of, from the outside, it's like, oh yeah, he's kind of hard science fiction guy, Mars trilogy, yada, yada. But the more I kind of go into it, it's like, wow, he's a gorgeous writer. He's, you can feel these landscapes, um, these, you know, this, it feels the, this ecology in here, um. This isn't someone who's cut off from the living world of nature. Uh, you know, it's some, someone who uh, you would think you could kind of go from this to a non nonfiction book about um, about seascapes, about beach cultures. Uh, and w it would just kind of, it would, it would mesh very well, if, as long as you had someone who was as good a writer as he was. So yes, that's my review of A Short Sharp Shock. Uh, yes, I would say check it out, especially... Uh, Especially uh, very good as a uh, something to listen to. I found that uh, also a kind of. It's funny how certain books even uh, it was it, it worked well for me that way. Um, where there are other books that are dense that oh I, I have to keep on rewinding rewinding. The dream sort of sense the kind of the flow really I think was well served by listening to this on audio. More videos later.